So if you're getting started with Excel VBA, do you need to know more than one looping technique in Excel VBA? Hmm. Well, I'd say probably not, but in specific situations, it is helpful to know two or even three different looping techniques. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video, a different type of looping technique in Excel. And I'll tell you the specific reason that we need this looping technique is gonna expand your Excel VBA vocabulary and introduce you to another powerful technique and concept. But it's good to be back with you in the Excel VBA Real World Task Series Season three, are you enjoying the series? I hope you're building up your file as I'm building up mine. And remember, if you like this kind of video, we don't have many series like this on YouTube. That's because it's higher level tuition. It's available in our member community. And if you enjoy analyzing football data, you'll love our Excel VBA Football Traders um, member community where we've got lots of series just like this. The link is in the uh, video description below. With that said, let's get back into our task. And we said at the end of video three, this is the specific problem we've got. Our fixtures are kind of the wrong way around. Uh, the most recent fixture is at the top. So we need to work out a way to loop through these fixtures from the bottom going back to the top. Mm. Now, the technique we've currently implemented, the for each loop, that's going to start at the top and work down to the bottom. And in 99% of the situations, that's fine. But in this specific situation, <clears throat> excuse me, getting excited, we do need a different looping technique. Okay, so let's talk about the loop techniques in Excel, Excel VBA. The first one is our for each loop, and I recommend you learn this first. The second one is for next, for next. Now, for next gives us a little bit more flexibility. For example, in terms of the order you're looping through the items in the collection. Hmm. That could be interesting for us. In English, that means we could go from top to bottom or from bottom to top. We've also got the do until loop. Let's not worry about that now, but that gives us even more options. Okay. So let's think, think about putting a for next loop in here. So a for next loop, what's the basic syntax? And we're going to get some error messages at this point. So we're going to say for, and we need a variable name here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable at the top. I'm going to say fixture counter as integer. Hmm. But to support these loops, not to support do until loops so much, but we often need a variable. We always need a variable with for each to support the process of going through this loop. So this variable, declare variable uh, to count through fixtures. There we go. So now we can use uh, for next. How does it work? Well, it's for variable name equals start number to end number. This is the basic syntax. So we need a start number and an end number. Mm. So how are we going to define those? Interesting. Well, I'm going to define these in a static way. You could define these more dynamically. At least the start row, we're going to define statically. So I'm just going to put five in there. Why is it five? Because five is our first uh, fixture row. And what's the end row going to be? That's more difficult to find. And once again, you could do it dynamically. And I keep referencing uh, dynamic position control in this series. That's because it's important. Check out our video, Excel BBA position control and 13 one line macros. The link is in the description below to get started with dynamic definitions. We're not going to worry too much uh, in this series. We're going to do things in a static way. We're going to assume our data sets are going to stay the same. Clearly, that's a difficult assumption to sustain. That's why you need some kind of a dynamic control. With the for next loop, this is our basic construct. Okay? And once again, Excel helpfully highlights in blue what the key syntax is. That's the blueprint. But maybe that's why it highlights it in blue. All of your for next loops will have for, a variable name, and then a start and an end point communicated numerically, five to three, seven, four, and then next, and then repeating the variable name. And that's our blueprint. Okay. Do hmm. you want to give this a try? What's wrong with it? What was the whole point of implementing a different kind of loop? Well, it was because we want to go from the bottom to the top. So we can say with for next loop, 
we can firstly say a start point and an end point. And then there's this super powerful additional construct, the step construct that we can add that says to Excel the increment that we want to use when we're working through this range that we've defined numerically. How about that? That's the specific reason we need the for next loop in this case. Now, if you don't use it, it's going to default to one. Yeah, and you're just going to work through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. But it could be two, five, whatever you want. In this case, we're going to set it, set it to a negative value. Mm. What what will that do in practice? In practice, it's going to start at the bottom because we've got the negative value. It's going to work up. The negative value moves up, of course, uh, in Excel. Okay, good. So let's see what happens here. Message box. Mm. Okay. I'm going to say message box sheets fixtures. Uh, this should be data, of course. Dot range. Okay, and then stop the video. How are you going to dynamically reference the range that we want this loop to look at? Mm. How would you do that? And maybe have a look at this and then stop the video. How would you continue this syntax? Well, if we say B, Excel is going to look at column B, that's all good. Then we want the ampersand, the and sign. What does the and sign do? It allows us to connect the text string, the B, to a variable. Hmm. Does that open things up for you? Now stop the video and now see if you can do it. Okay. So if I say B and <laughs> fixture counter here, there we go, fixture counter being our variable. Of course, that variable's holding a value between three, three, seven, four, and five. B and fixture counter, and then dot value here. Mm, some complicated syntax, isn't it? So just take a moment to review it. We've got the B in the speech marks. That's going to get us to column B and then the and sign. And then you can see the variable doesn't have the speech marks. That's because it's a variable and that will make Excel understand the value that's being carried in the variable. That's why we don't have speech marks with variable names. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna disappear for a second. Hopefully I'll remember to bring myself back. And when we, let's put a, mm, 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 yeah, I'm just gonna put a break point here so Excel will stop when it gets to this point. I'm gonna hit play. Well, when I hit play, what's gonna happen? So stop the video what value hopefully is going to be externalized here. You can see the value on the screen. I'm going to hit play. We've got Great, da great Dane. Hmm. Okay, why did we get Great Dane? Well, we got Great Dane because you can see the value here in row seat 374 is Great Dane. And you can see with the loop, we're starting on row 374. So another great technique if you're in break mode, and we are because we've put a breakpoint in the code and we've got a line of code highlighted here, then you can just hover your cursor over the variables there. And I can see first Excel is looking at 374. So it's the value on the data sheet in cell B374, which of course is Great Dane. Seems to be working well. So if I hit play and disappear a second, what value are we gonna see next? We're gonna see Staffordshire Terrier. And then what value? We're going to see Flatco Retriever, and we're going to continue Siberian Husky and Boston Terrier there. Mm. So how about that? So we managed to solve a problem. You know, we, we had a practical problem there, didn't we? Because we weren't able to get that loop going. You know, we, we could have sorted the data maybe, but that would be another step. Could have done that with VBA. Wouldn't have been preferable. Wouldn't have been preferable. So by knowing at least two of the loop types, it gives you a bit more flexibility in this situation and in this series so far, we're gonna learn a lot more. We've already learned four net for each loop and we've learned four next loop and appreciated a few of the additional possibilities that four next gives us. Okay, can't wait till the next video guys. But in the meantime, if you like this kind of video series where I work through a real world task, you will love our member community. So if you never checked them out before, just go and have a read. Yeah, we have a great time in there. These are small groups of people, like-minded people, very supportive communities. We have a great time hanging out, for example, in Members Monday, and there's a whole library of content with lots of 
deeper uh, series like this because the sessions, the longer we have a lot more time to go into more depth and detail, that's going to support your learning and power forward, powering forward your Excel VBA skills. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. I will see you in the next video.